nice, little bit breezy morning. Some people are up making brekkie. Oh man, I had a good sleep last night. Still getting the, the fogs out of my eyes. But uh, let's go check out the, uh, the cliff. So this is what I was walking down last night. You might not be able to tell by the angle of my camera, but it's pretty steep. Wow, those are really cool, impressive cliffs. Been wanting to see these for 10 years plus, ever since I heard about this park. Oh man, finally get to see it. It's not too cold today, but it's got a nice, definitely a cool breeze. I'm gonna have to put my sweatshirt back on for sure. But wow. Here's the beach area. <laughs> Not a whole lot of room to swim. I wonder why that is in so far. Either it gets really deep, really fast. Yeah, look at that, 0.6 meters already at that spot. Guess just want the little kitties not to go fat past that. Not that any kids are gonna swim. Now it's getting cold and colder and colder. But, uh, oh, there's the washroom right here. No lifeguards, parents. Children are your responsibility. Hmm. Nice step so people don't fall down the steep embankment. I guess they have, would have uh, maybe life preservers there. Don't tie your dog to it. Beautiful beach. And this, there's a path that goes all the way around here. And there's a path on the other side, I guess, so that um, the people that work here can clean these washrooms. It's like a, like a vehicle road. But uh, let's walk all the way around here and check out this boat ramp. They didn't want to build the path anymore through here, so they built stairs up to another path. But that's a nice place to get out of the water if you wanted to swim and not get sandy feet. Just put your shoes on, go back to your tent. I'm guessing the earth used to be up higher and then eroded and now exposed to all the roots. That looks really cool. Look at that one long root. Jeez. One of the only problems with this park is that we are almost in the middle of nowhere and getting no uh, cell service. So when I arrived, my wife likes to know when I arrive, I have to send her a text. When I got here, no cell service whatsoever. I didn't know that right away. And uh, so I started making dinner and getting all that set up. And then I went to go send her a text and uh, there's zero, nothing, no bars, nothing. 
And so it's just like, oh boy, she's gonna be like freaking out. Where am I, blah, blah, blah. So I tried to send a couple texts in hopes that if, I, if my signal did try to go, then it would at, le at least upload it. But uh, so I got in the car after I did all the food stuff, got in the car, started driving back out to the highway, but I ended up accidentally here at the boat ramp and uh, I got cell service. And uh, so I sent her a couple texts just saying, uh, really bad cell service here. And uh, so don't try and communicate anything that you really need to know. Uh, Cause I just can't, I even told her to, text my mom because my mom, my mom wanted to know when I arrived and safe and sound because it's about three and a half hour drive from the cottage to here and uh but at least I got self-service from here so I'm going to try and do another text before we go back and the funny thing is all the roads are like so windy and, and that's how I got lost and then came down here and I thought I was so far away but I'm literally right over here but I had to go the whole long way around with the vehicle. Anyway, let's take a peek. Somebody lost their flip-flop. It looks like you can do one of those little advertising shots. Vaughn Echo Provincial Park. Come wander. Share your stories. Very cool. Beautiful scenery. Beautiful. That was awesome to wake up to, but now I'm hungry and I decided to uh, do French toast, cinnamon French toast and syrup. So we gotta get back and uh, get all the gear out once again and uh, start cooking breakfast. Show you how I make my cinnamon French toast. I think we'll do three. Yeah, three or four, maybe four. Got lots of bread, lots of eggs. I'm hungry, let's do it. Back up this crazy big hill. <laughs> Good exercise. Breakfast time. Left most of my pots and pans and stuff right here. Fully accessible for the morning. Planning ahead. Get up some of our stuff. I'm gonna wipe that table down. I'm just gonna get everything out that I need and then we'll put it away properly. Once we finish breakfast, because that will be the end of our day. All right, I'll need this. I'll leave the back door open, get our table out.
tell them to get the eggs. And they will be at the bottom. I think I got some that. And everything else is fine. It's still cold in there. Nice. This is a new tray that my wife got for me so that I can organize a little bit more. And I uh, got a little toaster thing. Uh, got wet wipes. Everything I need. So we're gonna need the pan, the eggs, and this bowl for sure. Gonna make some coffee for sure, which reminds me it's over here. This is that uh, instant coffee. Uh, I'm gonna need that syrup. I'm trying to get everything that I need now, right? I'm gonna use a plate and a flipper. I'm hoping that's all we need. I think the rest of the stuff is at the back. My wife also got me this instead of the other kettle. Uh, it's good for doing small amounts of water. It's a little bit smaller in size just for my van. So we'll go get some water and we'll come back. To save time, I'm just gonna use some of my drinking water get that boiling by the time I come back from getting fresh water from the tap with this thing uh, I'll save some time again my wife bought me this thing it's pretty small and perfect size and it's got these two handles that come out and attach around the back like that and then you can just pour your coffee your water whatever so let's take that off get our water Good way to save fuel too. Put the exact amount of water you want. So that'll be my first coffee. I just want to make sure I put the right amount in. And there's this is the problem <laughs> with not having something over top of you. It's just a something from the tree. I bet that will boil really fast. Um, I'll bet that's gonna go quick. We're gonna to have to be quick to get our water and come back. The other thing too is I noticed yesterday that uh, I need to have a shield because that wind's coming this way. So what I do is I use this. That blocks it just a little bit. Okay, so we got our water. Let's see how much time it took. Oh, it took a little bit longer than I thought. Let's get our instant coffee. Do one now and one later. put it on two sides because it was just taking way too long. I need my coffee now. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Let's shut it off for a second. Grab our handles, nice and safe. Ooh, it is actually quite warm, but I can handle it. Good morning. <laughs> Using my Rustool cup. They don't have a 
the gift shop wasn't at the front entrance plus it was late so if they even had one open they probably wouldn't let you in so uh there's a visitor center in the area so we'll go check it out and if there's a bon echo mug we'll grab one maybe give it to paul he wanted he's always wanted to come here he would like that i'll do three eggs your eggs. Let's get our oil out. We'll put that in the frying pan get that going. This thing wasn't really meant for holding oil. It leaks everywhere. This is one of my favorite breads either that or texas french toast or texas toast because it's nice thick and square uh this is my uh second go-to we used to buy this all the time now i'm gonna do three because they are big all right let's start cooking saturate your bread that sounds good So you can do two at a time. Fresh ground cinnamon. This is the only way I love my French toast. Cinnamon is the way to go. A little bit longer. Let's break them apart. I'll probably do it both at the same time, maybe. Yeah, there we go. And the next one is going to be all by itself and I pour all the excess egg onto it as well. Use up all the eggs. Once I got that off, the second one, then we'll throw on our uh, ready to make crispy bacon. It won't take very long. There's just a few strips in here. Really expensive, but very convenient for this situation. So I'll probably use like four, because I think it's eight slices all together. We'll get our second, our third piece of toast ready. One more flip, one more flip. We'll take our cinnamon French toast off. Just like that. Cinnamon it up. the rest of our egg on top why not try my best to keep it all together it's gonna be messy bottom it's the messiest we'll put this one here this one here move that to the center oh look at that we'll quickly throw our bacon strips on here everything's time sensitive people time sensitive we just need this to be heated up it looks like there's 10 pieces but they're pretty oh 12 pieces looks like they're pretty thin though Then 
that's good enough. Sort of bacon all the way around, make it look super awesome, appetizing. Look at that. We'll put our butter on, syrup, good to go. Breakfast is served. Let's get out our butter. It was a cold night last night. My butter got a little bit on the hard side. Yesterday it was super soft. Do you guys like putting butter on every single piece? All right, syrup time. There we go. Gotta make sure it runs down all the sides. You gotta use up all the syrup for sure. Should have brought two of these. <laughs> that look good or what? Dang. Let's try one of these bacon first. I guess I can cut just in half. Not a whole lot of bacon. Pretty good. Again, a dozen a pinch. On camping situations, great. Even backpacking, you can have bacon on the third day because you don't need to refrigerate it. I'll cut right down to the center. Get that triple threat piece. Plus that extra egg. That's fantastic. And the only thing we're missing is the call of the loon right by the lake here. Enjoying our beautiful cinnamon French toast. That's not a loon. It's like a raven. <laughs> he smells my bacon. I eat fast. This is definitely one of my favorite camp breakfasts. If you're not in a hurry to go on a big hike or something. Sometimes we just do like pop tarts, cereal. But if you got the time, cinnamon French toast. It's a little bacon and a toast combo. Last bite of this beautiful breakfast, besides my bacon. Mmm. That was awesome. Fantastic. Clean plate award. Once again. All tidied up as you can see let's go check out this visitor center dishes are done have my cloths hanging up hopefully they'll dry in the next little while uh, all the fridge stuff is back in the fridge and all my cutlery and everything is all put back and yeah, I think we're good to go let's go check it out another crazy mess in this car By campsite 121. It was awesome.
few people still sleeping. These people were up having breakfast because I had to get the water all the way over here. That's where my I was getting my water from, right there. I'm gonna have to look at the uh, site map to figure out which way this visitor center is. Here's the garbage facilities. So if I had uh, extra garbage, I'll just take my garbage home. No big deal. So this is the main road of the park. And this should take me to, so that was Sawmill Bay. There's the front entrance right there. So this probably takes us straight to the visitor center. Let's go take a peek. Oh, a nice sandy beach down there. This is the visitor center. I don't see any buildings. Oh, it's over there. Not a whole lot of people at the visitor center, except that guy. Oh, well, these are uh, canoe rentals, amphitheater. I noticed all these trees were all planted in rows, so I figured it was forested in this area, but it turns out there's a plaque right here, and the Bon Echo Inn uh, was built by a woman in uh, 1900, and uh, she died in 1921. Her son took it over, and uh, it declined in the 20s and had to close in 1928, uh, and then was struck by lightning and burnt to the ground in 1936. So these are the photographs of this beautiful inn. It would have been amazing if it was still around, eh? What a gorgeous looking building, 27 rooms. And uh, so they planted all these trees after it was all torn down, whatever was r remaining. So this is where the Bon Echo Inn was located. And this is the view they had, just phenomenal. Look at this view. Oh my goodness, location, location. I can't believe that uh, the popularity of the inn declined. I bet it would be booming today if it was still around. And look at this view. They had this beautiful beach, this amazing view of the cliffs. Phenomenal. Check out these mushrooms. Cool. That's how big they are. Pretty big mushrooms. They're everywhere. This is the time of year, I guess. The temperature and weather is just perfect for them to grow. They're all through this forest. I put my newspaper somewhere and I can't find it and I don't know where the visitor center is. The sign pointed this, oh there it is. The sign pointed to this area. I think I'm in this huge parking area so I have to go back and then turn and that's where it is. Found it. But you can't drive down here. Only their vehicles are allowed. Looks like I found the visitor center. What a beautiful looking building. Very rustic. And I bet that sign says closed. <laughs> Knowing our luck with closed buildings this year. Yep, closed until further notice. So, but they had a lot of history stuff in there we could have learned. Next year, oh, it's starting to rain, of course. Oh, here's the gift shop souvenir, but that's closed too. Yeah, the little open sign. It 
is not lit up. We got a plaque, park events, got some water. The gift shop is closed. Come on. Today is Monday. Closed. Closed on Mondays. We just get no luck. And I bet you could buy cool stuff in there. A new mug. I just want a mug. Something that says Bon Echo Park on it. Got a big anchor. Oh, look at the back side of this building. That is beautiful. That, oh my goodness, I'd love to know when that was built. I got his anchor here. And I gotta take a picture of this building. Just gorgeous. Get closer. That bike rack's in the way. That's not gonna work. Well, guys, I had a lot of fun here at Bon Echo Provincial Park. It's definitely another park that I will come back to again and again. And uh, maybe one day Paul and I will come here and we'll uh, climb that cliff. One of those things that we've always wanted to do. I think uh, it's not rated too difficult. So, uh, cause you have to lead climb that and uh, takes a, a special kind of nerve to lead climb a cliff over water. So uh, you don't want it to be too difficult anyway. So uh, thank you very much guys for hanging out with me at Bon Echo and I hope you enjoyed the last couple of videos. Uh, I will research. Uh, we're running out of time for doing some of these parks. Some of these parks close are clo already closed. Some of them close. This one closes on the 17th of October. It's the 4th today. So whenever you see this video, hope you guys can make it out here. And if not, come back next year. Check the Provincial Parks websites and uh, find out when they open, when they close when the visitor center is open that would be a good one anyway thanks guys for all your support on this channel i'm hoping you i'm hoping you're enjoying the uh, food creations that we're doing and uh, again i'm taking suggestions so keep leaving your your comments in the comment section below of breakfast lunch dinners just special cool camping things that you'd like to see me cook all right guys thank you very much for hanging out with me and we'll see you again in the next video